In August of 1962, former Governor Percival Baxter acquired the final parcel of land in northern Maine, fulfilling a lifelong dream of creating a park around Mount Katahdin. In Portland, Baxter Volarbar began as an initiative of Mayor James Finney Baxter. Last week, the city of Portland celebrated the contributions of the Baxter family to the city and the state. Both projects were controversial at the time, and at a sunrise ceremony along the Back Cove, historian Herb Adams talked about the price both men paid for their vision. If there is a moral to the story of the father and the son, Mayor Baxter and his son Percival, it's that in a single lifetime, the conflict between being a successful politician and a principled person in one body sometimes means it's a struggle because the adherence to principle cost both of them their political careers. The building of this boulevard cost James P. Baxter his re-election as mayor. His dogged determination about what he called the Centennial Park, what we call Mount Katahdin and Baxter State Park today, cost Percival Baxter his chance to be nominated for the United States Senate. But the irony, both of whom, uh, both of uh, them were very conscious of it, is that it freed them to do something else with their lives. These are the words of Percival Baxter in the last speech he gave to the legislature as governor and that he repeated in part in 1925 on the day when this boulevard was actually dedicated. This is what he had to say. Both men and women today have unusual opportunities to enter politics and render service to our state. The danger, however, for the young lies in desire to hold office rather than to render service. Holding office has spoiled many good people who in order to continue in power have been willing to sacrifice principle and honor and few know when and how to retire gracefully. Some enter political service expecting to accomplish things worthwhile only to find their efforts blocked and useless. The moment a person displays their independence, you are likely to be confronted by opposition and checked by powerful influences that seek to break you. Health, courage, determination, ability, and principle are all needed if true success is to be attained. Temptation shall be set before you and plausible argument offered you to abandon your upright course. If you hold out against these influences on the road, then your path, instead of being strewn with roses, will be beset with thorns. And even though you may not reach the high position to which you once expired, you may fail to accomplish some of that which you set as your goal. Then you may at last determine that you have your self-respect. One should never lose the ideals that stirred and prompted you in your youth. I have earned in my career, writes the governor, the respect and confidence of my fellow citizens, and if I have done so, I have been sufficiently rewarded for all my work. I love the state of Maine and all its people and this affection has increased with every year of my service. The hard things that have been said have long since been forgotten and there is no one in Maine toward whom I would hold the slightest ill feeling. I am grateful, he writes, for all that has been done for me. Grateful that my years as governor have not been marred by scandal. There is much to be grateful for, he writes, and yet there is much I intend to do for my state, he writes to us, because we know the rest of the story. David Starr Jordan says, today 
is your day and mine. It is the only day we have. It is the day in which we play our part. What our part may signify in the great whole we may not know, we may not understand, but we are here to play it, and now is the time. Percival P. Baxter, Governor of Maine, State Capitol at Augusta. God bless you.